What's up guys, I'm Adam from Diddy Reviews. Welcome back to Diddy Reviews. Today we've got another CPU cooler. This is from Thermalright again. This is their AXP120X67 and this is a low profile cooler, so let's get into it. Right, as I said at the beginning, this is a uh, low profile CPU cooler. This is one of the new ones from Thermal Right. It's AXP120X67. Um, like I say, low profile cooler for small uh, form factor builds mainly. Um, obviously, it can be used in other builds if you want to. I've not got a small form factor build here. I'm going to be using it in my current system, which is a uh, full tower case, but I'm going to be using it and testing it, see how, it, how well it goes. Um, so, what we'll do is we'll get it unboxed. We'll go over, obviously, what's on the box as well. Uh, and then we'll get it in the system and we'll give it a test and we'll give you some results at the end. So anyway, let's get into unboxing this and uh, let's see what happens. Right, so as you can see here, this is the uh, Classic Series Thermal Right Low Profile CPU Cooler. As I said, it's AXP120X67. Um, we'll just go over what's on the box first so we can uh, uh, see what the specifications are like. Um, so your dimensions are 120 by 120 and it's 15mm uh, high, I believe that's the fan. Uh, so it's a standard 120mm, well, a, a sort of slimline 120mm that's on top of this. So you should be able to use a different 120mm if you wanted to. Uh, and it's up to 1800 RPM on the fan, so that's quite good. Does, uh, noise decibel level of 26.1, so it seems like it's going to be quite quiet. Airflow of 59 CFM and a H2O max of 1.36. Uh, that's a static pressure reading, and it's a standard 4-pin uh, PWM uh, fluid dynamic bearing. So that's uh, the fan that's included. Uh, the features of this is uh, multi-fan configurations. Um, I'll have a look inside. I assume that's where about you put the fan on the uh, top of it. It's a slim fan, and it's optimized for compatibility. As you can see over here, it also co it covers uh, Intel 11, 1150 series, uh, 1200, and also 1700 series. So it's ready for 12th gen Intel, which is good to see. And like I say, this is quite a new cooler, I believe. And it's also obviously AMD for, AM4 for, for AMD, so that's nice to see. And then let's have a look at the heatsink itself. So you've got the heatsink dimensions, 123 by 120. That would be the width and the length of it. And then the height of 52. I'm not sure if that's including the fan. Um, I would assume the fan's on top of that. So that was that take it to 67 millimeters tall. So it's actually quite small. Um, should go in quite a lot of small form factor builds. Uh, Weight, I'm not too bothered about that. Um, the heat pipes, we've got six of them. And the six millimeter heat pipes. There's a lot of heat pipes on this, which is quite good to see. Um, hopefully it will uh, show in the performance. And they are pure copper heat pipes. And the uh, fins are aluminium fins and nickel plated. And it says it's a thermal power of capability of 165 watts. Um, again, we'll see how well it performs on the, my test. Uh, it is going to be on the 5900X. Um, all cores clocked to 5.6 gigahertz. Uh, 4.6, sorry. Um, so we'll see how well it goes. Anyway, let's have a look in the box. Um, pretty much standard. Uh, we've got sort of accessory pack on the top. Um, we'll have a look at that in a sec. We'll just get the rest of it out first. Take out all the packaging. Nicely packed. Um, Small installation guide, um, shouldn't be too difficult to install, these things aren't normally. Um, I am obviously going to be installing it whilst my motherboard's in a case, um, I don't recommend anyone does this because it can be uh, quite tricky. Um, so most people will be, be installing this outside of the case on the motherboard before they put it into the case, so um, bear in mind my sort of feedback on this installation is going to be a bit different to what it actually is. Uh, there's the fan. Uh, as you can see, it's a slimline fan, and it's only 15mm thick. Uh, it's a standard 120mm uh, in terms of the, the other dimensions of it, um, so that's nice to see. Uh, like I say, potentially you could get different fans to put on this uh, if you want to like put RGB on it or anything, because it hasn't got any of that. Uh, put that to one side. And then we've got the cooler itself, um, and I think that's it for the box, so we'll put the box to one side. And this is the cooler itself. Wow, that looks really nice, actually. <laughs> So that's your nice uh, low profile cooler, um, not a lot to tell you about really, it's uh, sort of like grey on the end here, um, looks pretty smart, it's a pack of silicone in there, um, obviously you've got a cover on the uh, plate here, so I assume that's nickel plated copper on there, and like I say six heat pipes running through, six millimetre thi uh, thick, um, yeah it looks actually really nice. Um, so. We'll get, anyway, there's not really much else to show you about that, so we'll, uh, we'll have a look at the accessory pack, see what comes with it, and then um, we'll, uh, we'll carry on. So in this accessory pack, um, it's probably going to be standard stuff, really. Uh, I don't expect to see anything um, different to usual. 
going to be all your mounting brackets and things like that. Um, so you've got, there is some TF7 thermal right thermal paste in there. I won't be using that on today's test because um, I like to keep everything sort of fair across the board. Uh, I'll be using Arctic MX4, which is my sort of go-to. Um, and but I might, I'm gonna, I'll test this in a, in a future video to see how well this performs. Um, and you've got your brackets in there. They are AM4 brackets in there. Uh, is it just AM4 in there? I believe it's just AM4 in there. Uh, you got some standoffs for 1150 series and 1200 Intel. Got some standoffs for 1700. You got a plate for 1700, I believe. Yeah, or for Intel, all Intel that is. Uh, some more standoffs for AM4 here, so that's what I'll be using today. Um, and then you've got some more screws and things like that, which uh, I'll figure out eventually uh, where they go. And then in here, these are your fan clips. So, let's have a look at these if I can get them out. So I want to see if you can put more than one fan on it. Ah, right, so by the reason of that, that says TL1-2025, that to me, yeah, they're different. You actually get a set of brackets for putting a standard size 120mm on it as well. So you can use the one that's with it, obviously with those brackets, or you can put a standard 120mm, um, 25mm thick uh, fan on that one as well, which is nice to see. So they've included that for you, so you can put whatever fan on you, you want on it, basically. Any 120mm fan you've got, you can put it on so you can uh, RGB it up. So anyway, that's the uh, unboxing. What we're going to do is we're going to get it installed um, and then uh, we'll give it some testing at the end and see how well it performs. Right, so the results. Um, I did my standard tests in a bench R20 multi-core 10 minutes, um, just to keep it fair um, between all coolers. Um, now let's talk about the results. The um, obviously this is a low-profile cooler. It's meant for sort of like small form factor builds, not really like high power systems. Um, generally, um, obviously you can put it on um, bigger systems if you are using sort of like like I'm using a 5900X in a small form factor, then obviously you'd want something like this in terms of the size. Um, but in terms of performance, right, I had, a, I had quite a few issues to start with. Um, so I got it installed, looks good, fine, all clamped down properly, thermal paste on, everything like that. Uh, I came on to run it on Cinebench uh, with my usual settings of 4.6 gigahertz across all 12 cores, and instantly I was getting um, really high temperatures it shot straight up to 80 and just kept climbing and climbing and climbing and actually got over over 100 degrees got to about 105 before the system shut down and um, due to over temperature um, now to me that obviously says that this isn't capable of running uh, at such a high frequency um, because with the way uh, the Asus software set up in this motherboard it doesn't allow it to come back down it just pegs it at 4.6 and that's it it doesn't allow it to um, automatically throttle back um, to save itself from crashing um, so that's why um, it, it did that basically so um, can I recommend this cooler for um, high overclock systems no I can't definitely not um, like I say my my, well, my my airflow in this case is absolutely insane I've got uh, three 140mm fans at the front three 120s at the bottom um, and I've got two, three exhausts at the top and the sides, um, at the back, sorry. 
Um, so I've got plenty of airflow in here. Um, so obviously in a small form factor case, you're not going to get as much airflow uh, generally. Um, so I can't recommend this for sort of 5900X, 5950X at sort of high frequencies. Now saying that, however, it's not a complete failure. Um, I then put it back down to auto so it could uh, correct itself and run it whatever it needed to run at um, to keep itself in check. Um, so basically let the CPU do what it wants, the motherboard obviously sorts all that out without precision boost overdrive or anything like that on. Um, I put it back down to that and managed to get through the test no problems whatsoever. Um, it did. It hovered around 4 GHz throughout the whole test on all cores so it's not bad. Um, obviously it's not ideal but then again Cinebench is a massive sort of stress on, on the system and it's not a usual uh, use case scenario. This is, I want to show it at, at its worst case scenario what it can do. Uh, so basically the best it can do in terms of um, stress if you know what I mean. Um, so anyway let's get into the results um, so once I put it down to uh, auto not locked at 4.6 gigahertz like I say it stayed around 4 gigahertz throughout the whole test um, so it's not bad at all uh, I get on 12 cores um, it's obviously going to generate a lot of heat. Um, so in total we got uh, we got a maximum of 86 degrees um, on the CPU package 75 on the CPU um, so yeah not too bad at all actually um, I can't really complain at that um, an average of 77 across the whole test on the CPU package and 66 on the CPU uh, and yeah a maximum of 86 and a maximum of 75 so um, yeah not too bad at all really um, like I say I can't recommend it for overclocking and things like that. You can't do it. So if you're looking at that, don't don't buy this cooler. Um, there might be coolers out there, sort of low profile for that. Maybe the Noctuas are, are, are capable of this. I don't know. I'm not used one myself. Um, but if you're looking for it for a small form factor, or if you need, you just for some reason need a low profile cooler, or you like the way it looks and you want to put an RGB fan on it or something like that, then as long as you don't overclock your system, um, well, at least don't overclock it too um, crazy extreme. Um, then you'll be absolutely fine with this. It does keep it under check and keeps it into a nice temperature. So yeah, guys, that's, um, that's all I've got to say about it, really. In terms of the installation, um, really easy, actually. Really, really easy. Um, if, even even with me putting it in while it's in, in my case, uh, I did do a little video to show you um, how it's installed, and it is really easy. So if you're doing it on your motherboard before you put it into your case, um, it's going to be even easier. So uh, yeah, I uh, can't grumble at that. Um, yeah, there's not really anything else I can complain about with it. Um, like I say, if they did an ARGB version, maybe that'd be nice to see, but you can put your own fan on it and you include the clips for that. So yeah, there we go, guys. Um, I hope that in helps. I hope you, if you're interested in CPU cooler, um, this gives you an idea of whether you want to actually buy it or not. Um, and yeah, hopefully gives you the insight you need to this cooler. Um, massive thank you to Film Rack for sending this over. Um, I've got another cooler by them to test, which I'm actually really excited about because it's quite different. Um, so I'll be doing that very shortly. Um, and uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.